utility of this article relates to exploring the benefits of using double venous anastomosis in deep flap breast reconstruction. Dr. Boutros outlines his consecutive experience over a four-year time frame. He describes 352 flaps in 192 patients. A little over 88% of these patients' flaps had double venous anastomosis or 311 flaps utilized double venous anastomosis. There were no flap failures, and in the double venous anastomosis group, there was one flap that returned to the operating room for exploration. In the single venous anastomosis group, there were two flaps that returned to the operating room for exploration. Overall, a very interesting study with very nice results and a very low take-back rate. Some future thoughts for a follow-up study may include looking at the correlation between double venous anastomosis and the types of deep flaps that were used. In other words, were there uh, medial row perforators that were used, were there lateral row perforators that were used, and also the number of perforators that were used might be interesting to look at. Also, the size of the flaps in terms of how they correlate with these deep flaps also may be interesting, and also patient factors such as body mass index. I think one of the pearls of the study really relates to what Dr. Brutos describes in terms of fat necrosis. In the double venous anastomosis group, he looked at uh, these patients and found that there was a 6.3% fat necrosis rate. In the single venous anastomosis group, there was a 16.7% fat necrosis rate. Although the numbers were not statistically significant, I think this is a very interesting um, point to consider. Perhaps a future power study may elucidate the number of patients that might be required to find significance related to um, demonstrating the utility of using double venous anastomosis in terms of decreasing fat necrosis in deep flat patients.